Here's what's coming up on your horizon. Well, in today's digital age where consumers have online access to almost anything they want from around the world, companies struggle to find a competitive advantage. Today, our focus is on adding value to not just products, but to people. We head to southeastern Oklahoma to see how some entrepreneurs are taking a common product, mixing in a little ingenuity, and adding value at the local tech center. It makes us feel so great to be able to, you know, keep them in business and uh, you're able to, you know, keep their business going by what we're doing. all that in one place. Oh, it's already gone. <laughs> I'll take you to this year's Governor's STEM Summit where students are learning some life lessons by studying science, technology, engineering, and math. I've learned how to work with a team and how and how important that is to any project. School has always been something that I've been really good at, and so a lot of my classes haven't been super challenging, but entering into robotics has really made me want to pursue courses and um, career paths that will challenge me. We meet some young people whose interest in video games is leading them into a new career pathway. The classes that they have, not just the engineering classes, but also the math and science classes are geared um, with engineering and computer science in mind, which I feel would give me a better footing for college and a career. And we end our day with a family adding value to a favorite holiday treat. We we're just at a point in our lives where the farm was running really smooth and we wanted to chase a dream. Stay with us for Oklahoma Horizon. Oklahoma Horizon is made possible by CareerTech, a job for every Oklahoman and a workforce for every company. With additional support from the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food and Forestry. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us here on Horizon. I'm Rob McClendon. Well, in the simplest of terms, value added is when you take a homogeneous product and add something special that makes it worth more than the cost of its underlying parts. Now this can be as simple as adding a brand name to an otherwise generic product, or as complex as assembling something in such a way it becomes unique and subsequently more valuable. Nowhere is value added more profitable than in the food industry, where the cost of raw commodities often just make up pennies of the actual purchase price of the end products. Our Austin Moore starts us off with a look at the value of adding value in Krebs, Oklahoma. For those travelers in search of the best cuisine, Italy is likely at the top of the list. The country is famous for wine, pasta, and especially for cheese. But if Italy is out of reach, Krebs, Oklahoma will take you on its own tasty journey. If you go to Rome, you're not gonna get a meal like you would in Krebs, or vice versa. It's kind of evolved. It's Italian style, but it's evolved from like a depression era Italian. Sam Lavera is the owner of Lavera's Italian Grocery a store his father opened in 1946. It was just a neighborhood store, and my brother and my sister and I, my mother and he, we all lived upstairs in the apartment above. Today, Lavera's is known not just as a destination store for Italian ingredients, but also for the sausage they produce and for the cheese. It's called Cacciagola, it's called a pasta falata style. The other Cheese in that family would be mozzarella and provolone, so it's really great. It's just a table cheese. I mean, you just cut it off, eat it, or you can melt it. It's a stretch curd. It's, uh, you get the milk and you stretch it in hot water and you make a, a gourd out of it, like a gourd, so you can hang it and dry it. And we make world-class cheese here, right here in Oklahoma. Uh, it's, most people wouldn't believe that, but we make as good a cheese as anybody in the world right here. Acclaim his cheesemaker and son-in-law, Sean Duffy, can back up. We have had the opportunity to garner 11 national and international awards um, since 2012. Our 
Kaju Kavera cheese, our traditional, was voted the best mild provolone in the world in 2012 in England. Um, our smoked cheese, our hickory smoked cheese, just two years ago in Sacramento, California, was voted the best smoked cheese in the country. Of course, the story's not really about the cheese. Not really. It's about the jobs. Unlike most industries that are sort of uh, downsizing the amount of employees you know, with the use of robotics and other technologies. Artisan cheese is very much in and of itself a labor intensive uh, process. And so just innate in its nature is the opportunity to develop jobs and those things because it's very hands on. There's a lot of labor involved. These cheeses need meticulous attention whilst they're aging for the three to four months. And uh, even in the production room, there's just a an amazing amount of work that goes into every batch. And every cheese has different demands in both production and aging. So when Laveras wanted to expand their line, the small facility on site wasn't enough. Enter Pontotoc Technology Center and their small business incubator, which normally helps startups grow. Anywhere from IT, from, from computer programs that they use on their, their books, their record keeping, to office clerical skills that we help train their employees if they need uh, soft skills. We do that right here at Pontotoc Technology Center. Herschel Williams works with agriculture business management at Pontotoc. We provide rooms for meetings and, and equipment that they couldn't normally invest in that we have here at Pontotoc Technology Center that they, will do, they have access to. The separation of the curve from the way. Normally our companies stay here three years we help them get established and, and get them on their feet and then they move on. The cheese plant people, they'll, they'll be here. The only time they'll leave here if they outgrow this facility and build a bigger facility for them to move to. This is about 400 gallons of milk. We'll probably get around 25 to 26, uh, 10 to 12 pound wheels out of it. So almost 300 pounds of cheese from 400 gallons of milk. So very, very good yield. Laveras is using this location to create a different line of wheel cheeses known as Toma, with plans for a rustic gorgonzola to follow. This facility opens up all sorts of uh, opportunities for us to expand, uh, hire on new people, bring on new dairies and that sort of thing. With the installation of a new food grade floor, thanks to the Ada Jobs Foundation, the school board here saw an opportunity to create new jobs for Ada, with Laveras hiring a local crew and to shore up some in the region's oldest industry. We had a need for, for farmers and ranchers here in, in this southeast Oklahoma to a place to produce their, their goat milk. Um, there wasn't any place in Oklahoma. This is the only cheese manufacturing place in Oklahoma that uses goat milk and cow's milk. And this is an opportunity for a small time family to come in and, and put 100 goats in completely different than a hundred cows, not near the expense to go into it and make a profit at it. And that's the key point. We you know, don't need to do it for practice, so we need to do it for a profit. Cross Broom Farms supplies goat milk to Laveras. Owner, Becky Wise. She says, uh-uh, I don't want no part of that. Right now we have 125 and we have three bucks that are in the pen back yonder. And now uh, we've got some little ones as you can <laughs> in the pen out there but yeah but all of these girls uh, we love them to death with a state-of-the-art facility and the caring heart of a mother of a meeting of the mind wise is working to build this dairy into supplying milk year-round the goal is to breed a third wait a month breed a third wait a month breed a third and that way you've always got a cycle going and then eventually everybody will be online and then you start the, the process all over for wise there was no greater thrill than the first time she saw what Duffy and his team were creating. He had wheels of goat milk cheese, and I was just like, is that ours? And he said, yeah, that come from your goats. And I was like, golly, that's just awesome. It's awesome. That's my milk. That is my milk, and I helped make that product. But that's the whole thing. That's the whole point of it, is I want to create or help somebody create with our milk another food source for people out in the world to eat. A goal shared and embraced by Sam Lavera and his family. It makes us feel so great to be able to, you know, keep them in business and uh, you're able to, you know, keep their business going by what we're doing. 
Now, if you'd like to taste some of this cheese, it is available online or in Whole Foods Market in Oklahoma City or Research Foods in Tulsa. Now, when we return, adding value in the classroom. You're watching Oklahoma Horizon with Rob McClendon. Weekly insight into your changing world. Well, science scores among Oklahoma students have risen in the past decade thanks to a concerted effort to attract more students into the STEM fields of science, technology, engineering, and math. When state leaders gathered for this year's Governor STEM Summit, their goals had not changed. To help close the skills gap. By attracting more students in today's growth industries of science, technology, engineering, and math, we want to make sure that whatever certificate or degree a person gets, that is relevant. And interesting, which takes us outside the summit doors to the students and their robots. These aren't toys. We program it, we run it, we practice it, we check our codes. We have to keep a log of everything we do. Alton Rayburn is part of Sprockets, Gordon Cooper Technology Center's robotics team that we met earlier this year when they won the top award at the regionals for FIRST Robotics. A group of kids who have found success that goes well beyond science. I've came to Gordon Cooper. I've totally come out of my shell. I used to be really shy and I probably couldn't even sit here and talk to you. Um, but it just gave me um, a completely different outlet to life and I've learned so much through Gordon Cooper and it's given me tons of experiences that I would have never been able to have before. And she's not alone. Every student we talk to had a similar story. I've gotten a lot of experience publicly speaking. I used to be very worried about it. And being able to talk with strangers and meet them and interact with them has helped me a lot in that aspect. So while the subjects may be science-based, the lessons learned are about so much more. We do a lot more than just building robots. And I've learned how to work with a team and how, and how important that is to any project. Essentially, building confidence by building robots. I'm actually really interested in the medical field, which is a long road, so this has taught me commitment and uh, drive to work towards a goal, even if it's hard, even if uh, obstacles come in my way, to continue to work for that goal, to continue to uh, strive for it, even when things are difficult and when things don't work like I think they should or like I want them to. Uh, so that's something that's really important that I'll take with me. Top students that may have first been attracted by the academics, but are learning lessons in character. School has always been something that I've been really good at, and so a lot of my classes haven't been super challenging, but entering into robotics has really made me want to pursue courses and um, career paths that will challenge me, majors that will push me to be the best that I can be, to not just be comfortable in something that I'm good at, but instead to venture out and try something new that that is hard, that is difficult, and that makes me strive and work for something, and that's something that I've learned to really value and enjoy. And this is where the value added comes into education. While the students may first have been attracted to the sites, what they've learned is so much more. Still to come on Oklahoma Horizon, taking a fall treat to a year-round staple. There's no manual that tells you exactly how to do something. They just you got to get into it and just start building. But first, from video games to a career. So we can use the skills we learn in math on how to manipulate matrices over in programming when we're working with arrays. Well, computers are something most of us come into contact with on a daily basis, whether they be on our desktop or on our smartphones. And while they are completely integrated in how we live, most of us don't have a clue how they work. Our Timothy Cole takes us to a new academy where students are learning the language of computer science. Welcome to the Smash Room. It may not be their typical classwork, but the students seen here of the Francis Tuttle Computer Science Academy are putting their lessons to good use. As far as this goes, this is the first computer science academy that I know of in the state, possibly you know one of few just nationwide. And for that matter, we're literally just trying to address an academic deficiency. Instructor Shane Martin sees the lessons being taught in his classroom as necessary and important. There's a lot of, a lot of schools that don't offer very much in the way of computer programming, computer scientists, computer engineering. And so here at the Francis Tuttle, we're literally trying to, to hit that, or to meet that need. And fellow instructor Heather Voss agrees with him. There's 
three engineering academies, bio, biomedical science academies, they have all gone on to huge things, and I expect the same from our students. The Francis Tuttle Computer Science Academy is designed with high school students in mind to prepare them for college level work. Rigorous math and science courses are combined with computer science related classes as students gain the academic knowledge and skills needed for success in college. We're giving them basically college rigor classes. Uh, all of our coursework is either pre-AP or AP level. And so at that point they're, they're taking the same type of courses, the same type of curriculum, the same type of rigor that they would see in a college course. And by doing so we're giving you know, some of their basic education in science and math, uh, anywhere from a pre-AP you know, geometry all the way up to cal AP calculus. Uh, same thing in, in the sciences, we're looking at pre-AP chemistry all the way through AP physics. While geometry is nothing new to a high school class, here all coursework is geared toward computer science and programming. For example, in pre-calc we're learning about matrices and uh, how to manipulate them. And so Ms. Voss uh, made the comparison that matrices in math are like pretty much identical to arrays in programming. And so we can use the skills we learn in math on how to man manipulate matrices over in programming when we're working with arrays. If all that sounds a little foreign to you, you probably aren't alone. But to Nick Gonzalez, Jeffrey Rand, Andy Frells and their fellow students at the Computer Science Academy, it all seems to come second nature. The classes that they have, uh, not just the engineering classes, but also the math and science classes, are geared um, with engineering and computer science in mind, which I feel would give me a better footing for college and a career. Many students come to the academy seeking an academic challenge, while others are drawn in because computer science has always been a part of their life. Well, my dad does it, so I looked into it a little bit, but I learned that it's a growing field, a field that has a lot of potential, and a lot of companies are undersaturated because they're not updated enough, so they need computer scientists, and it's a well-paying job now. While all these students may be from different school districts, they are brought together by a joint interest in computers. Because it's such a small class, you've been able to get to know each other better. You talk more, you get to know each other more, you can help each other out more because it's more of a similar crowd. It is the smallest academy. We've got, you know, say, 30 kids total. And so I feel like that uh, bond is a lot stronger between um, all of us. One of the things that is unique about an academy setting is that students come to us from multiple schools, and all of these students have common interests. So they're not in classes with students who aren't interested in what their interests are. So you'll have students from Deer Creek, students from uh, various schools in Edmond that are all in the same classes and they find that they have common interests together. Which brings us back to the Smash Room. Super Smash Brothers is a video game that's been around for many years, but its newest release on Nintendo's 3DS and Wii consoles gave the students some inspiration. We all uh, already played Super Smash Bros. on our 3DSs, so we were bringing those to the Academy. The game is also for the Wii U. We thought if we had one here, then like over half of us could play at the same time. So a couple of the students one of them brought a TV, and one of them brings his Wii U in the game, and so we just put it in the empty room Mr. Martin had that he wasn't using, and yeah, we play Smash before class and during break. So whether the kids are having fun, or learning hard, instructor Shane Martin says the point of the academy is to prepare these students for their next big adventure after high school. Uh, really, the, the goal here is to kind of give them a base. Uh, literally, with every student, whether it be in chemistry, physics, uh, C sharp, Python, HTML, whatever the case may be, we're not really going to make a student a master at any one thing, um, but it is to give them a very broad base with, with which they can make decisions and be, you know, I guess, fully prepared uh, for the next step. Here's one for side X, which is equal to here's the easy version. Now, if you'd like to learn more about this profession, we do have a link to OK Career Guide on our website at OKHorizon.com. Horizon is at your fingertips. Join us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube to catch the segments you may have missed and our latest new content as it happens. Well, this year's pecan crop looks to be a pretty good one. And while yields can vary from orchard to orchard, what remains constant is that by adding value to their crop, growers can increase their profits. With more, here's our Blaine Singletary. 
The Miller Pecan Company has always been about harvesting pecans, but after building a first of its kind in the state pecan shelling plant, they've gone into the business of processing them and making them into unique quality products that are truly made in Oklahoma. It all started when Lenny Miller bought his first pecan harvester in 1988. He and his family collected pecans in several small orchards across northeast Oklahoma, and the business grew and grew. We've always harvested pecans and everything, grew them, and uh, always be on the farm selling to local neighbors and everything, and just always kind of wanted to do a little more with it. That's Jared Miller, son of Lenny, and despite losing his father in a farming accident in 2011, Jared and his brother Justin were driven forward to make their family's dream a reality. We were just at a point in our lives where the farm was running really smooth and we wanted to chase a dream. So in late 2014, Jared and Justin opened their pecan processing plant in Afton, nestled just off historic Route 66. Jared oversees the sales of their products while Justin focuses on the shelling operation. I pretty well just crack them. That's, that's, that's all I want to do too. From the sorting, to the sanitizing, to the cracking, and finally packing, the Millers are proud of their work, and they're still learning every day. We went from cracking a couple thousand pounds a day, trying to figure out what we were going to do with them, and now we're running them around 15,000 pounds a day cracking. Demand for their products has grown to the point where they're not only processing their own pecans, 90% of what they shell comes from their own orchards, but the other 10% is bought from other orchards around the state. And that also means... Longer hours. <laughs> you know, uh, it's like any farming industry. Uh, there's no such thing as a 40 hour a week, especially this time of year. Usually we start about six in the morning and some mornings, if we got big orders and trying to fill them, we don't leave here till midnight or one o'clock in the morning. And it makes for a short night's sleep. It's also led them to realize that they're not done growing yet. When we visited them, they were breaking ground on a new cold storage unit to keep up with the pecans they're cracking. Didn't underestimate the demand, uh, just underestimated maybe our growth, how well we'd be accepted and how, you know, how fast we would uh, gain new customers and everything. So it was something that we had no idea until you just get into it. And higher demand for more product means more local jobs. While in the past the millers would have had to ship their pecans to shellers in other states, this plant allows them to keep things local, producing a product that's truly made in Oklahoma. There's just a lot of people that wants to keep business within the state. Other small retailers and stuff can buy from us and can market it as a made in Oklahoma product and just to, to let Oklahoma people know that this is our product. Starting your own shelling plant from the nuts and bolts is a gutsy move, but for the millers it's one that's undoubtedly paid off. Not just for them, but for their local customers. I think it's kind of exciting to be to have something like this in Oklahoma that's producing these because I mean let us keep them in state, produce them in state rather than keep shipping them out of state, you know. I mean, there's no manual that tells you exactly how to do something. You just, you gotta get into it and just start building. While pecans are technically not a nut, they're actually part of the droop family like avocados and peaches. They're a big treat this time of year. For more information on the tasty treats Miller Pecan Company offers, just head to our website at okhorizon.com and look for their link under this story. Want to see more stories like this? All our segments are streaming on our YouTube channel at Oklahoma Horizon TV. Next time on Oklahoma Horizon, we look at an often hidden but very real problem in Oklahoma, hunger and food insecurity. I could tell that with all of his heart, he had to swallow his pride to be there that day. That man really needed food that day, and I hope that what we gave him was a chance to step over one difficult situation and be able to find his own footing. Feeding the Hungry on Oklahoma Show for the Heartland, Oklahoma Horizon. Well, that is going to wrap us up for today, but you can see more of any of our stories on our website at okhorizon.com. 
Follow us throughout the week on Twitter at OK Horizon TV or like us on Facebook where we do post our weekly stories. Thanks for including us as part of your day. I'm Rob McClendon. Hope to see you back here next week. Oklahoma Horizon is made possible by the Oklahoma Department of Career and Technology Education. Oklahoma's Career Tech provides nationally recognized technical education. Career Tech elevates the economy, helping Oklahomans get great jobs. Career Tech connects thousands of qualified graduates with thriving Oklahoma businesses. Career Tech also gives Oklahoma companies training and services that help them become even more profitable. Oklahoma's Career Tech a job for every Oklahoman, and a workforce for every company. With additional support from the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry.